Okay. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Just Shut Up and Listen. It's episode 009. And today, me and Nikki are in the presence of Dr. Duncan Goheen and his lovely wife, Mary Lee. And they're going to talk with us about sleep because we really need help with yeah. sleep. And we've got experts to help us with that. Absolutely. Because the best part of skin practices is a good night's sleep. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's important for nutrition, too. Yeah. But it's something that, you know, people aren't doing. or They're no. not doing properly. Yeah. And we hear all the time, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. Mm-hmm. So how can we be less tired? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Dr. Duncan, I can't do your, your biography justice. Can you please explain, uh, introduce yourself. T- tell, us, tell the listeners a little bit about how you got into what you're doing and, and how you help people with their sleep. Okay. So I guess uh, I'll maybe... Go back 50 years. Is that far enough? Yeah, sure. We'll take way back there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I uh, a long time ago, worked uh, with a team of psychiatrists, psychologists, uh, and social workers with psychiatric outpatients, uh, and uh, did that for a period of time and uh, decided to uh, make some pivots because I felt that we really didn't know what we were doing. Uh, to a large extent, to some extent, but not to a large extent, because the default at the end of the day was usually drugs, mm-hmm. uh, which really didn't get to the root of the problem. Uh, but most, uh, quite often, the side effects cause more problems. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, anyway, started to uh, do a number of different things. And then uh, during some projects that uh, we were doing in Honduras and the Philippines, uh, we were doing projects in education, health, agriculture, and so on. We saw work that was being done that was treating effectively schizophrenia in six months or less with no drugs, which blew my mind, frankly. Absolutely. And uh, so we, we followed up on that uh, because they're working basically in the energy field mm-hmm. with subtle energy and uh, doing treatment there. So the initial focus there was really on mental health, mental treatment. And I was also working a lot with sound, uh, sonic work. Mm-hmm. And uh, so between the sonic and then the, it was the pranic uh, healing work that we saw in the Philippines, which we then brought to Canada uh, Mary Lee and I were both instrumental in that at, at, uh, in the early 90s. And uh, so we brought that to Canada and have subsequently trained hundreds of people and treated thousands of people. Um, and following that, so we had clinics running in Victoria, and then uh, we moved to Kelowna 20 years ago, plus, I guess now. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we do a number of things, one of which is... is, is uh, sleep work because Mm -hmm. that is such a chronic Mm -hmm. widespread problem it's become sort of endemic in our culture it's it's uh you know it's a complex issue but it's at we're finding it's at the root of of well there isn't one serious mental health issue that's not tied in with sleep there isn't one and they're beginning to see now that most chronic illnesses uh, there's a pretty direct relationship there mm-hmm. to sleep loss, sleep problems, and so on. Uh, so we, we're, we're doing a lot of, of work uh, in that field right now, as well as uh, dealing with stress, anxiety, and that sort of thing. And a lot of what we're doing, uh, we're, we're not uh, advocates of, of the pills mm-hmm. that, that are out there, because frankly... A lot of the research being done at Harvard and other places is showing that m- most of the pills uh, have have uh, very, very little positive effect and in most cases are either neutral or harmful. Mm. And so uh, in some cases it can be necessary, you know, there, could, there might be a, an emergency or whatever, the person's dealing with something for a week or two or whatever, but not for 10 or 20 years right. that a lot Absolutely. of people are on these meds for. Yeah. So, so we're, we're working on that, and then we're, we're, we do a lot of work uh, on this, we'll call it the subtle energy level, uh, with using sound, using sonic, and, and Marilee's using a, quite a, a kit bag of things as well. Mm. I'd, I'd mentioned before our talk about talking about, you know, we could fill up this time just talking about what's happened today right yeah and and what's happened there because yeah. as we speak there's distant treatment 
happening now with uh, clients in Florida mm-hmm. that are in emergency uh, situations and, and so on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Marilee, do you want to talk a little bit about your mm-hmm. your background? So, because yeah. she's, she's got a tremendous... Yeah, uh, it's kind of hard to talk about my whole background, so I'll just mainly talk about the things that I'm using right now. Um, so, of course, Duncan mentioned pranic healing. It's a form of energy healing, which is non-touch. And it's, it, it trains people, and we train people how to use it. And you're able to check out what's happening in the energy bodies. So the emotional body, the mental body, the physical body, and the spiritual body. And then you're able to measure all the chakras and find out uh, what's happening in each one of them. So that uh, then there's a whole process of learning how to clean them mm. and then balance them. So a lot, of <clears throat> the, a lot of my clients come from psychiatrists and psychologists and, and other professionals who are having difficulties with their clients, so they send them to me. And, um, and, our, and even though I do some talk therapy, and I'll get into that in a moment, mostly if I have a stressed client, I'll immediately start working on their energy body and get them to not talk mm. at mm. all. Um, and, and so I'm taking out stress from their system. And often if a person's highly sensitive, they're also picking up other people's stress. Right. And so I'm removing all of that stress and then able to, and also removing thought forms like worries and things that they, they keep bouncing around inside of them that get bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm. So removing all that. And then once they're balanced, then I can talk to them about, you know, what it is they want. And then when I'm in doing the talk therapy, it's also on a different level. I'm working with their belief systems. So I'm finding out belief systems that are, that are stopping them and preventing them from being their full potential self, their higher self. Um, I also um, help them get towards some training um, for finding out what their boundaries are, finding out what assertiveness is, because if we're not assertive, then we become aggressive. Mm-hmm. Then, it, then we have relationship problems. Um, and I also help them understand more about codependency, which is, of course, something else to do with boundaries. But I don't do a lot of that work. I'll, I'll sort of refer part of that work out. And, but the actual belief systems, we hold them in our bodies, and we find out what those belief systems are. And sometimes they're not even our belief system. They could be coming from a grandparent or a parent or something that happened in our lifetime. So it's, um, it's exciting because you can see a transformation very quickly. Mm. With the pranic healing, we also work on the physical level. So for an example of some of the clients we worked on today, uh, we have a couple who came here maybe a month ago and mainly it was because of her treatments that she had gone through many, many treatments for different kinds of cancers. And so we gave her a lot of treatment, and then we were also treating the husband because, of course, he was dealing with stress and depression because of his wife Mm. having the sickness. And now they're on holiday, and he ended up in emergency yesterday, two days ago, with heart surgery, and uh, very critical. I think he was, they had the paddles on him nine times today. Wow. So, you know, he's still in... in, um, critical condition mm-hmm. and so then we've been working I've been working on that also helping his wife manage everything down there mm-hmm. and then right now we're still using sonic uh, in the other room uh, and directing it to him so distant mm-hmm. treatment for heart uh, to try and get it stabilized um, another client that I saw today what is a young girl straight out of uh, just finished school so she got here about 3 30 She's suffering from a concussion that was caused in her dance class uh, just before she pulled her shoulder. So we've been dealing with her shoulder, um, which is now pretty much healed, severe migraines from the concussion. And because of her headache, she can't sleep properly. So it's Mm. a sleep issue for her. And actually, the other two we were talking about also had sleep issues we were dealing with. and also dealing with uh, 
teachers, some of the teachers are very highly stressed and they're actually stressing this student. Not all of them, but some are. And, and she's already in a stress mode. And then she's having anxiety attacks, of course, because her pain level is up around nine mm -hmm. most of the time. Yeah. So a lot of people not understanding sort of where she's coming from. So I'm helping her on, on um, belief systems, but also uh, learning about inner peace. I've got five or six different things she can do uh, to help herself calm down. And if she can't sleep, things she can do for that. And then I also help her with her inner management. We all have different managers that are helping manage things like nutrition, like sleep. Um, and, and so I'm helping her with all of those things. And once they get balanced within her, then she's able to cope better. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a little idea. Yeah. Of some of and it's things. holistic too. Like that's mm -hmm. the really yes. thing. Like each one of these components on their own aren't quite enough. You need to connect them all together to find that great place. And like mm -hmm. Rain and I just did a podcast recently on like the spiritual or religious part and whatever that means to a person, how that's such an integrative part of our personal care to identify with whatever that means and that part of ourselves to find that real healing space and mm -hmm. to integrate that in. And yeah. be kind to each other with it. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's interesting. You mentioned that because uh, we just reserved the domain cosmic mind academy. Mm, yeah. Because oh, it's that great. it's that when one is in that space that the cosmic mind mm -hmm. um, that's another whole level. It sure is. Of of <laughs> yeah. you know it's it's you know and I, I've been writing quite a bit about that in the last few days, but it's. It's like as a society, we've developed we've developed technology that's far beyond our wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so, where do you get the wisdom mm -hmm. to direct what you're going to? What you know? What it is, so many people are unhappy with their work. Mm -hmm. What is it that they refer to? Where do they find what it is that their real purpose is? Mm -hmm. Their core purpose is, you know, and that. Is, is in that cosmic mind place, if yes. you will. And then how do you make decisions on a day-to-day -day level once you've identified and found what you are really called to do? Again, that comes from that cosmic mind place, yeah. which is such a challenge in our society to be in that place mm -hmm. because there's so many diversions, yes. so many distractions. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know, And then this whole idea of being of having this umbilical cord with our phones, mm -hmm. you know, which is just totally distracting and not allowing people, yeah. you know, to, to really contemplate, mm -hmm. not allowing them to be in that space. So, yeah. so then anxiety just mm -hmm. keeps increasing, increasing, increasing. Yeah. So that cosmic mind and mindfulness is, mm -hmm. is so key it is. for health yeah. and for, uh, and and for, for the planet. Really. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's that, conversation of coming into that awareness of it because now that I'm aware mm -hmm. that I am falling into distraction mm -hmm. I can identify to myself or reach out to a friend like Raina mm -hmm. and say I'm really falling into distraction today and then Raina can help talk me through well what's like what happened today like what are your feelings that mm -hmm. are calling you to that place of distraction like what is it about you you don't want to face about you today mm -hmm. and but once you're at that place those moments you move through them so much faster and you can like really mm -hmm. climb back into your integrity and climb back into your purpose and it's such a a beautiful and cursed place at the same time because once you're at that point of awareness that's when the real work starts and it's mm -hmm. it's kind of an interesting time to kind of be treading there mm -hmm. so i love that whole welcoming where, of that and it's where the miracles yes are, come yeah from. you know they talk about miracles and miraculous happenings and, yeah. and we see it all the time mm -hmm. and it's it's a wonderful thing it yeah. is yeah yeah. yeah, this is amazing. I don't know if this is where people are might not be expecting the conversation to go. Yeah. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah, I love it. So, what were the what were the burning questions that we wanted to talk um, about sleep? Like, since the majority of our listeners are kind of like, I don't know how today why little gophers are kind of the topic of my mind today. But gophers, everyone's like, yeah. kind of, it's maybe it's the season. But people are just kind of poking <laughs> their heads out. They're curious about things, and so it's just that real basic place is, what are some simple practices we can bring in to start that transition into 
um, stepping away from distraction and coming into like useful sleep practices mm -hmm. and things like that. Like kind of that really basic 101 yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so let's talk about sleep for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, it's so, I like to think of my 24 hour day starting about two hours before I go to sleep, before mm -hmm. I go to bed. So let's say if I'm going to bed at 10.30, uh, my 24-hour day starts at 8.30 in the evening. Okay. And it's how I set up that, that time before bed that really has a high uh, degree of influence on the quality of sleep that I have, the degree of sleep that I have, and on how my following day goes. Absolutely. So that, that two hours or so before bedtime is really important in terms of what are we doing at that time. So if we're in front of blue screens, which are mm -hmm. the antithesis of a good preparation for bedtime, because blue is the sky, blue is our brain is, is saying, wake up, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so on. So ideally, um, if, if you're having any issues with sleep, you know, two hours before bedtime, uh, shut down the blue screens, dim the lights, mm -hmm. you know, start to give your body a signal, you know, that it's now getting ready, you know, for bed. And then depending on, you know, if you have, uh, uh, if, if you meditate, if you read, if things that are inspirational, things that are that are constructive, that, that help you uh, in, in your life and so on, uh, reflecting on the day. Uh, if there's things that didn't go right in the day, sort of s seeing those as a video and then rewriting the video so that things are, are positive. Ooh, uh, that's so powerful. During that day, yeah. that, 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 that changes the energy dramatically. And then, and then uh, come bedtime, um, we, we often we have sonic program sonic for insomnia sonic for sleep that people use and it's a very powerful uh program because it helps relax the body and it helps align the energy centers and so on uh for proper sleep we've had people use the sonic programs who haven't slept right for most of their life mm. and they they begin to use that and so one thing is being able to get to sleep another thing is being able to stay asleep right so, so it, it helps uh, with both those things, the, the, the sonic. Having a cool room uh, that, you're, that you're sleeping in so the body can cool down, the body wants to cool down to sleep mm. uh, is, uh, is important. Uh, total darkness is ideal. If you can't have total darkness, then you can wear uh, eye, you know, eye covers and so on. But that's, uh, that's really important cell phone in another room mm -hmm. and turned off it's amazing how many go to go to bed with their cell phone and anything anything that comes through they're they're alert to messages and so on and so right. forth totally yeah. disruptive uh, mm -hmm. d disruptive to sleep um so those are those are some things obviously having a comfortable you know uh, bed and and so on uh, is important and then realizing, you know, we have about, our, our sleep cycles are about 90 minutes each sleep cycle. Earliest part of our sleep uh, cycle is, is more when we get into the deep sleep. And that uh, deep sleep is, is really powerful and res restorative to our, our cells, our body, and that sort of thing. It also helps to flush the brain. There's, there's now seeing dementia, Alzheimer's, and so on in terms of various proteins are, that are built up. Those proteins often are, can be flushed mm -hmm. during our sleep. And if we're missing sleep, a lot of that flushing isn't happening. So it can have a cumulative effect uh, over time. So wow. that's, that's a, a huge piece of it as well. And then, uh, of course, in terms of sound and noises and that sort of thing, any of those uh, distractions and so mm -hmm. on. So, so some of those can be helpful. Marilee, is there anything else that comes to mind? Well, we have a whole whole program that we go through cognitive behavior therapy, mm. which is part of what Duncan's talking about. So we understand sleep, we understand what we're to expect. And for a lot of people, if they realize that they're going to come up to almost a consciousness every 90 minutes, 
then when that happens, they realize that might be when they adjust their pillow, it might be mm -hmm. when they get up for a drink of water, and then they, they just slowly go back to sleep. But if a person's very, very worried and very stressed, when they wake up, then they'll start worrying about whatever mm -hmm. their problem is, uh, whether it's a health issue or financial issue or relationship issue, and, and then that's when they can't get back to sleep. So we actually train them and teach them some tools of how to get back to sleep mm -hmm. by breathing deeply, and there's many other things that we do to help them do that. And then once they realize that, it's more helpful. But there are people who have difficulty waking up and then not going back to sleep. And that actually cuts off the part of sleep that they really need for their mental and emotional health. Because if we don't get the sleep, uh, that, like Duncan mentioned, there's the deep sleep in the beginning, which is very, very important, where you're almost not, not able to be woken up. Mm -hmm. You're in a deep, deep sleep. But from the middle of the night on, our sleep gets much, much lighter. And so in those lighter places, it's easier to be distracted or woken up. And during those times, if you don't go back to sleep, then your brain doesn't have a chance to, because in the last part of your, uh, the last half of your sleep, you're doing a lot more dreaming. And if we don't go through the dream cycles, uh, the deep dream cycles that we need to go through, um, then our body, our brain isn't able to reorganize everything all the events and all the emotions we had during the day, our emotions are actually stronger at night. Mm -hmm. We actually have more intense emotions in our dreams. And if those aren't done, then, and some of it discarded and some of it reorganized and put into long-term memory, then when we wake up, we actually have a mild mental illness because we're, we, feel uns we feel unsettled, mm -hmm. we feel like there's something wrong, we feel like we're not settled, and it's because those memories and belief systems and all those things that have happened haven't got organized and haven't been put into long-term memory. And as a result, if we miss that sleep, we never catch it up again. Mm. Whereas if a person, like say a firefighter who has to stay up a long time and not get much sleep, our core sleep is five and a half hours. So if you miss part of the core sleep, our body will make it up the next time we get a chance to sleep. It'll make that core up, but it will never make up that reorganizing that's needed in our brain. Okay. So a lot of the children that we deal with that are 11 to 19 that are having difficulty, like Duncan said, a lot of them are distracted by their phones. Mm -hmm. They're not able to sleep. And when they're not sleeping properly, they're, they're end up ending up with anxiety attacks. And Anxiety attack can happen from lack of sleep. Mm. It's one of the stresses. Thank you so much happens. for explaining that. Like yes. that just made it make so much sense mm -hmm. because like for me, when I reflect on my dreams and reflect on things and I do understand that my brain is sorting things out mm -hmm. and I've always pictured my brain kind of like a filing cabinet and it's filing things and throwing things out and doing that. And I never really thought of if you didn't file the things, that's a big messy pile of yes. emotions and feelings sitting on your mental desk that you never dealt with like that thank you so much for like explaining that that like that is, is so important pretty fascinating mm -hmm. yeah and Amazing. we talk about our dreams a lot we were hoping to talk a little bit about them yeah so now we're here yeah that's and, great and Meredith's mentioning about the students and so on like mm -hmm. like it it's fascinating the the school districts that delay the start of school by one hour on average the kids grade grades go up by one level Wow. They, they need more sleep. Mm -hmm. they, need more they need sleep, you know. So we have the early starts in school to accommodate the system and administration right. and so on. But it's sure not for the good of the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good for maybe administration. Maybe it's better for the teachers. It's not good for the kids. So, yeah. you know, th there's been a lot of demonstration of that. You know, mm -hmm. just start school an hour later and just watch what happens, you oh, know, wow. to, the, to the children and to their performance and to their their overall well-being, sense of well-being. It's it's a it's a big issue. Super yeah. fascinating. Yeah. 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 And yeah. seemingly so simple. Like yeah. seemingly mm -hmm. so so such a such an easy fix. Yeah. 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 But it's interesting, you know, the biggest advertising budget that big pharma has is for sleeping pills. Yeah. Mm. And yet all that's research that's done you know, in terms of the efficacy of the sleeping pills doesn't support it at all. Mm. 
-hmm. but it's a quick fix. Right, and that's people's go-to is just, well, I got a pill for it. Mm -hmm. Well, it can help short term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, if a person's but, in but a, that's, you know, that's, that's right. for a week or two, mm -hmm. maybe a week or mm -hmm. two, mm -hmm. it can help. But yeah, long term, it's not helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and kids between the ages of 11 and 19 have twice as many brain cells in their head, and so they need more sleep because then they have the hormones and then they're growing on top of it. Mm. So they really need the amount of sleep, almost the, uh, the amount of sleep that a young child needs, like a baby mm. needs. Mm. So their sleep, their sleep is more important during those y years, and sometimes they're getting less. Yeah. And then we're having, uh, in fact, at 7.30, I have a client from Victoria who's a special needs, um, special, special teacher. Mm. And all the kids in her class are violent. And my, my student, my, um, one of my clients tomorrow is a, um, a retired teacher in Colorado who, the same thing, had to deal with very violent kids mm -hmm. and had to quit because she was being injured so much. And a lot of these kids are being so violent because they're not sleeping. Mm. And it's causing extreme mental illness. Yeah. So it's it's a it's there's a lot of stuff going on right now that yeah. that when people could use um, proper sleep and finding out how to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the sonic programs are just amazing yeah. for Absolutely. people. And sometimes people will turn them on and put them on auto loop, and mm -hmm. they'll play all night because it doesn't matter if you're sleeping or awake; they still are very effective. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think uh, another question that we both had, um, because I sort of, I, I can sort of mold myself for what I need to be based on what's going on. If I want, if I can be a night owl, if I'm in writing mode and I'm staying up writing, um, or I can be an early bird. So the question that me and one of our most burning questions that me and Nikki had was, is this, is this, um, something that is just, you know, if people identify themselves as I am a night owl, that's just how I am. I've always been that way. Is this, um, is this just, that's just a belief they have, and so that's just how they are? Is that changeable, or no, is it, it because they're... It seems like, they're the, you know, the, the people do have uh, a predisposition to, mm. to, uh, to, uh, to one or the other. Okay. And, uh, and so it gets to be interesting, too, if there's a couple, you know, that are, that, you know, they're trying to coordinate their times and so on, but sometimes uh, it is better, you know, if, if a person is is ready to go to bed and mm -hmm. you know and there's you know we teach people how to really be aware of those signals mm -hmm. and if they really honor those signals like there's basically two things happening the one thing is the circadian rhythm which mm -hmm. is tied in with the daylight and dark and so on and so forth the other is is a, a, a buildup we'll call a sleep pressure buildup and it's adenosine buildup in the brain and it's a function of of you being awake so as the longer you're awake, the more the buildup there mm -hmm. is. And the ideal scenario is when you get those two cycles uh, th that are in sync with each other. Mm -hmm. So you get sort of the maximum sleepiness, mm -hmm. you know, time from your circadian rhythm, you know, and, and for the sleep pressure buildup. Mm -hmm. uh, then that's, that's the ideal time. That's the time you get your sort of optimum sleep, optimum rest, okay. and so on. Uh, but in our society, we've, uh, you know, over the last hundred years or so, you know, some have said we've we've reduced our sleep time by one hour. Some some are say two hours and so on. But it's been significant. It's not that we as a species need it less. Mm -hmm. It's that we're we're getting less, mm -hmm. and, and and so it's extremely important. So anyway, that circadian rhythm, uh, that you know that, that that's why the World Health Organization has said that. They now consider uh, uh, night shift work, night work, you know, to be carcinogenic mm -hmm. because of the correlation, the high correlation, and so on. We we know that the immune system is impaired, mm -hmm. you know, when you're not getting the right sleep. Like one, seri one night of lost sleep can drop your immune system by up to seventy percent. Mm -hmm. So what does that do? That oh, you know, whatever the weak link in the chain is then all of a sudden th that that becomes very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So it can be heart, it can be cancer, it can be any one of, it can be all sort of mental uh, issues as well. But it's a, it's a, it's a critical piece. So anyway, there's those, those two things that are build, building up, but 
but there are people that that tend to be ready for bed earlier and mm -hmm. others that are later and that's just part of their system and so on and, and they need to honor that and, mm -hmm. and go with it you know that's perfect so that's someone like me who's saying to like i always say to myself it's 9 30 i should be starting to go to bed but i'm not tired yet right. but then it's like but i read i should be in bed by 10 o'clock for best but i'm yeah. like but i'm really not tired yet yeah. so i should right. just go with it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. then you can start doing things towards going to sleep, mm -hmm. like getting pajamas on earlier, have a shower, you know, start turning the lights down. Um, one of the things they're finding is that if we really want to get in touch with the circadian rhythm, and we, we teach this to young mothers because babies are born without a circadian rhythm, they need to find one. And so getting out first thing in the morning, mm. getting outside, getting some natural light where it's bright. Doesn't even matter if it's raining, at least you're mm. out. So the first half hour getting out and then again in the evening about this time going out. So that, you know, you have a half hour in the morning and the evening. So getting the body ready for sleep. Mm. And they took some, I can't remember how many this study was, uh, but they were very chronic people that had chronic, chronic sleep problems. So what they did is they sent them out camping and their only, their only rule is they couldn't have any artificial light. And two or three weeks later, they all came back and they were all getting up at six mm -hmm. and they were all going to bed at around, bed, uh, around nighttime. So again, Duncan mentioned because of our artificial lighting, right. we, we, we stay awake longer than we need to and then we're not getting the sleep and especially the sleep we need to organize our brain. And then also, like he mentioned, flushing our brain. Mm -hmm. So if our brain doesn't get flush, flushed, we're gonna have memory problems for sure. Wow. Mm -hmm. And food, mm -hmm. food's a big deal. <laughs> like, like uh, you know, like in a lot of cultures, you know, the, it's, it's quite uh, customary to be eating at nine o'clock at night, you right. know, and, and, and later. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have some people I, I deal with, you know, in Europe and so on. And quite often, you know, the, oh, we've, you know, we had a dinner meeting, uh, went to 11 o'clock or something yes. like that, you yes. know. So, so you have a full stomach, you know, the body's, you know, the body's you just put it to trying work now. to digest. Yeah. And uh, that is, is not a healthy thing, mm -hmm. you know. So the ideal scenario, if you're going to bed, you know, 10-ish or whatever, so, and, you know, whatever... If, if you're having a big meal, you know, have it, have it finished by six o'clock or mm -hmm. whatever, and then preferably not, not too much after that. And then, of course, like sugars and that sort of thing, or sweets, things like that, that, that tend to, you know, uh, that sometimes people have for evening snacks right. or whatever. Like, you know, it's, it's just doing the opposite thing, you know. Because you're amping your body. Yeah, up, and yeah. And you're trying to be, yeah, calming yeah, yourself yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that... That, that food is, is a big thing. And sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, just stretching, relaxing exercises, and all, that sort of thing, but not, not heavy exercise, mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. because the heavy exercise then stimulates the right. opposite response in the body, you know, so. so but like walking things. would be fine. Mm -hmm. It's just nothing like not pumping nothing weights. Nothing aggressive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stretch it out. Stretch it out. Stretch it out. So, <laughs> when was the last time that you had a poor night's sleep? Like never? You always sleep good. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, sometimes if you're traveling, oh, you know that that, that can, can be really hard. that can make make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, Look at them; they have no idea. They're thinking think. they're like, no, we always. Yeah. Sleep I can't great. think of <laughs> one. And and I also and we also make make a, an effort to go to bed. Like sometimes you sort of forget when you're busy and you mm -hmm. sort of think, and all of a sudden you know it's like after ten mm -hmm. and haven't even thought about it. So sometimes we don't get to bed till 11, mm -hmm. but um, we're pretty consistently up around six or seven. So I think, you know, the, trying to be consistent mm -hmm. within a half hour of getting up and, at yeah, the same that's, time. That's a big thing. Okay. Yeah, like the consistency can, is very important. And that's seven days a week. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, right. not weekends. Because quite often people will say, oh, I'm gonna sleep in Saturday, mm -hmm. Sunday or whatever. And that throws, starts to throw the system off. So okay. if, like, it's just, that, that's, an, really important point that Marilee made. If you, if you can go to bed within 30 minutes at the same time, 
and get up within 30 minutes at the same time every morning. It really helps your body, brain, your mind, everything. Sort of, you know, we're creatures of habit. Mm -hmm. And it, it really helps to establish that habit. Yeah. Yeah. So no more all-nighters for you, Raina. I guess not. <laughs> no. Shoot. And this, Actually. Is, this is another big thing. You know, they found out the students, you know, and, and uh, you know, and I, I, when I was going to school, you know, it was the same deal. You know, you, you cram and all that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Totally counterproductive. Right. Totally counterproductive. Marks like, are like, lower like all they, the time. Yeah, yeah they're mm -hmm. doing all kinds of studies that, you know. Memory that, that, isn't there. That cramming, you know, right. and missing the sleep and that sort of thing. And you don't have the memory integration and so on. Totally counterproductive, but widely practiced. Mm -hmm. Widely yeah. practiced, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, the, and the really good, um, I'm trying, uh, Federer, who is one of the older uh, tennis players, who's still very, very good, still winning, when he's competing, uh, and even when he's practicing, he tries to get 11 hours sleep a night. Wow. And he says, if he can, get, if he can do that, then he, all the, everything that he's practicing, will re, he'll retain it. Oh my goodness. And in fact, when he's he's actually competing, he'll rent a home for himself and a home for his family. So during the competition, he'll be in a separate home getting his sleep that he needs. And some of the, um, I'm trying to think of the, I can't remember the name of the rugby team in... Well, there's there's a whole that, number of athletes. Yeah, that, 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 they'll make sure yeah. they get 11 hours sleep uh -huh. and then they win. Mm. And the ones that don't, don't. So this isn't just for for our living. It's mm -hmm. also for high performers. Yeah. Sleep is very, very important. Yeah. And we all want to be high performers. Mm -hmm. yes. We really well, do. Well, yeah. I, I did a, yeah. a video thing on, on Jeff Bezos, the Amazon guy. Mm -hmm. And one the of the things... man in the world. One of the, one of the things that he puts high priority on is his sleep. Mm -hmm. He said, and, and, and as a matter of fact, he doesn't have what he calls, uh, I forget what... The, sort of high level meetings meetings that take take uh, all their their brain power and mm -hmm. energy he, he says he tries to schedule those around 10 and 10 in the morning it, it's in the me you know, it's not early he has a whole routine but he said that sleep for him is very very high priority so mm -hmm. you know people in business you know there's this myth you know that in this macho thing you know mm -hmm. well if you can get a buy without any sleep you know that somehow you're smarter, better, stronger, mm, and that sort of thing. More. Everybody right. be like Trump, you know? Mm, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> he yeah. he gets three to four hours, yeah. and we know what the outcome is there. Yeah. yeah, but in fact, then you're less productive because you're oh yeah. exactly yeah. yeah 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 yeah. So so anyway, there's this there's a sort of a reverse thought process mm -hmm. that we've bought into in terms of our values around sleep. That mm -hmm. you know if you if you can get away without doing any sleep, you're ahead of the game but yeah. it's exact opposite mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah i'm finding with my generation of entrepreneurs we're really that whole hustle dialogue mm -hmm. everyone's like that whole i'm hustling i'm doing the thing and i'm like the opposite i'm like no we got to resent the hustle because mm -hmm. For my first year of business, when I was putting in the 120 hour work week and I was exhausted and I was too busy to do anything, I was too busy to take care of myself and I was too busy, too busy, um, I took a total switch the other way and I'm valuing my sleep and valuing my nutrition and valuing, I'm like, I'm still doing just as well and I'm literally working a third as much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because and I'm, you don't have back problems anymore, yeah. you don't have the bowel issues, yeah. so many things have yeah. changed. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I get up and cruise into work at 10 in the morning. <laughs> Rested. Yeah. Rested. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And have some time for your cosmic mind. That's right. Meditation that in the morning, morning yeah. is yeah. important yeah. too. Because that's exactly. the thing in terms of the entrepreneur side and business mm -hmm. and so on. I mean, there's, and that was the thing that Bezos said. He said, you know, he said, we have a maximum of three important decisions mm -hmm. to make in a day. He said, if I can make three good decisions i've done a very good day's work Absolutely. you know he said so i could so what if i got you know three hours less sleep and i could make 20 decisions he said our business is all about quality decisions mm -hmm. and if we don't have the quality decisions it doesn't matter how hard we work if we're going down the wrong path i mean it just means we're getting there faster mm -hmm. in terms of the wrong destination so yeah. mm -hmm. that quality is so important so and that's important. where that the, the cosmic mind center, mm -hmm. if you will, is yeah. so, so key. Yeah. 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 I, I have a client in Edmonton that keeps getting fired 
and asked me, you know, what, why do I keep getting fired? And I said, it's because of sleep. Mm -hmm. your, your sleep isn't, isn't consistent and, you're, and there are times where you're really grouchy mm -hmm. and you can't be like that to your boss and to your team. How, how, can, how can that work? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter that you're getting, you know, you're doing lots of sales or you're doing a lot of the, the other things. If you can't get along with people, you're not going to make it. Yeah. And sleep is the really important thing. Yeah. So that you're happier too. It's true. <laughs> and yeah. Nicer, happier. And nicer. Yeah. Happier and nicer. It's exactly. True. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I've had days where I haven't had as much sleep because, you know, different, you know, things in life happen. Like when my dad's health was really poor, my, my sleep suffered from it because mm -hmm. I was on the edge of my phone. The phone's going to ring. The phone's going to ring. It, like I didn't turn my phone off. I'd left it on because what if something happens mm -hmm. with dad? And so my sleep was very broken and my ability to bring that thing I bring every day that my clients anticipate I wasn't even able to mm -hmm. like I couldn't hold space for them and help them navigate their way through life I couldn't even navigate my own way through life so mm -hmm. that sleep was such an imperative part to mm -hmm. being nice to be around mm -hmm. people wanted to be with me <laughs> we do yeah. now yeah it's true, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. so do we have any other questions like I, I feel like this was really, really useful. It's so useful. Yeah. I like the I like the flushing. I have a great image. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I read away some stuff and... about that, and I it's so nice to actually hear it that it's not mm -hmm. just an um, out there idea that the brain does that because yeah, because we don't ha we we have a lymph system in all of our body except our brain. Right. And so the brain has to clean itself. It cleans itself a little bit during the day, but the big flush happens during sleep. And mm -hmm. if you happen to be shortening your sleep then that's not happening. Mm -hmm. And so then our memory goes down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. And then that whole, um, the, the better and more we're doing for our sleep throughout our life, the better mental health we'll have later in life. It's mm -hmm. not something we can just cram a bunch of sleep in and midlife on. The better practices mm -hmm. we have, the healthier our brains are later. Yeah. And we can help find yeah. our purpose and help find our, you know, all of it. like it's all mm -hmm. tucked into sleep. It's beautiful. Right. Yeah. And women do have a little bit more difficulty sleeping uh, after menopause, around menopause mm. and after menopause. Yes. So um, it's important to, to already have a good system mm -hmm. and then realize when, you're, when you are waking up, how to get back to sleep yeah. and not allow that waking yeah. to stay awake. Yeah. And a lot of it is getting out early in the morning and then late at night and getting the lights down. And mm -hmm. a lot of women are wearing uh, masks now mm -hmm. so that they get the complete blackout because it is more difficult for women to um, produce the melatonin and serotonin in the brain. It's more difficult than, than for men because we also have the other hormone systems going as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the darkness is really important. Coolness. And that's why a lot of people aren't sleeping well in hospitals oh. and, in re and in retirement homes because they keep everything so warm, warm they can't yeah. sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of lights for the, um, lots of lights. the staff to come in and yeah, help lots people of noise. The yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the food. Oh, oh and the food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that's a conversation. Oh, that's a real conversation. <laughs> oh, yes. Let's do a podcast on that. <laughs> okay, oh, dear yeah. Lord. <laughs> Yeah. So, opening the window so it's cooler. Mm -hmm. Get a face mask. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or blackout curtains. Blackout curtains. Yeah. And prep at least an hour mm -hmm. to start slowing down. Start slowing and down. Yeah, I was a, a foster mom of uh, eight kids. Well, actually, a single mom for a short period of time. That's, that's another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Instant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instant. Instant parent. Single, a single parent. Single. And and. I, I needed right away to get them into sleeping because if they didn't sleep the next day, they fought with each mm -hmm. other. They had temper tantrums. Like they were just totally out of control. And so what I did right after dinner is start bathing the, the littlest ones and then started turning the lights down, having slower music, mm -hmm. getting them into their pajamas as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Story time. So they sort of had the idea mm -hmm. because they had to be up early there were um, seven in school, so the, the school bus came to take the five middle ones, and then I took the two older ones to the high school. But, yeah, they, it, they, they needed their sleep, and if they didn't get it, I you couldn't suffered. parent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I couldn't control them, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't help them at all. They were just out of control. Mm -hmm. So 
we do that ourselves, just try and start slowing things down. Yeah. And also not take not taking clients too late either. Mm -hmm. Like 7.30 is probably my latest. That's good advice. That is really good advice. Yeah. yeah. Also, I'm kind of embarrassed that I can't even handle my own sleep. Eight kids. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. This puts things in perspective. There are, yeah. there are between <laughs> the ages of three and fifteen. I can't. I can't even. <laughs> That's incredible. Well, Marilee and Dr. Duncan, we are so grateful for your time. Yeah. We've learned a lot, and yeah. you know, Carl is standing here looking at us. Yeah. And it's like, Carl is here. Yeah. He's he's in the flesh. Carl, That's come our producer. say hi. <laughs> Carl from Carl Raw Ross of Understand Health is our producer. Do you think that we Come sound better? Stand we at think the so. other end so they Carl can see you. <laughs> hooked us up with some amazing equipment that we're super stoked about. <laughs> Say hi, Carl. Hello, Shut Up and Listens fans. <laughs> this is Carl Ross, your friendly producer. <laughs> we we're so Carl happy you're so here, much. Carl. <laughs> yeah, we love Carl. So. Have a good night, everyone. That's probably the best way. Yeah, I think we should. I think we should let them do a shameless plug of all their stuff. Absolutely. So please. people can find all your information for all of your anything you have and, online yes. or anything. This, there's shamelessly plug yourselves <laughs> okay. at this moment. <laughs> okay, so if they go to the website globalhealthify.com, so it's just global health with an I F Y at the end dot com, and uh, so you can get in touch with us there, get a little bit of an idea of of uh, what we do you know as you can tell we we do a lot of work with sleep but uh it's it's pretty well the gamut uh that we do uh, i would say primarily you know, pretty well if everything to do with mental health uh mental emotional health and so on and uh, and, and some of the physical as well mm -hmm. but um so we're that's that's the territory we're in and uh so we do we do uh, pro we do online programs. We do a lot of online programs. So a lot of them are four week, six week programs. So that no matter where people are, you know, they can uh, engage in these uh, programs. And we use we do we do live webinars uh, we, on on uh, on a weekly basis and so mm -hmm. on. And uh, a lot of treatment work uh, that's people can come to our clinic here or distant work. Like we say, we're working with people as we speak in Florida and different places. So it doesn't really matter where people are on the planet that uh, the, the work is uh, equally effective no matter uh, where mm -hmm. people are. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you yeah, know, that's what we're into. Marilee, what else? That's about it. Healthify.com. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. That's how yeah. they can get in touch with us. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. It's wonderful. Yeah. And on that note, we wish everyone a good, good night. night. Sweet. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>